Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're talking about my top five favorite low-cost electric bikes. These are great for anyone who can't shell out two, three, four, or five thousand dollars for a nicer e-bike, but still wants something that has good bang for your buck, even if it doesn't have the same high-end build quality or the same long list of features as some of those really expensive e-bikes. Now, before we go too far, I just want to let you know that somebody watching this video right now is going to win this e-bike, the new Aventon Solterra 2. It's part of a program I've started called eBikes for Good that gives away eBikes to people who can't otherwise afford them. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see how you could win this Aventon. Now with these five eBikes I'm showing you guys today, if you do like one of them and you happen to buy one, I hope you will use the links in the description down below this video. You can scroll down to see them. That's a free way for you to support my channel and let me know that you appreciate the content that I'm creating. All right, now let's get to those five bikes. To avoid playing favorites, I've got a helmet here. I'm going to pull the names out of. So let's start with the first bike, which is the Ride One Up Roadster V2. Now this is the Ride One Up Roadster V2, and it is perhaps one of my favorite e-bikes out there, despite it being a rather simple e-bike. Now it's not super high performance, it's got a 350 watt motor back here, 500 watts peak, but it does have some cool features. The coolest in fact is the Gates carbon belt drive here. It makes it a single speed, but this is a nice lightweight 33 pound e-bike and it gets up going pretty fast. It gets to about 24, 25 miles per hour, so it's a class 3 e-bike. Now this one does not have a throttle, but Ride One Up did release an update to the bike that does have a throttle option, so you can add a throttle if you want. The battery's a little small, it's uh, 36 volts, 7 amp hours, about 252 watt hours. So I actually like the throttleless version, because if you have the throttle you're tempted to use it and that is going to burn through that battery quicker. But it could be nice to have just in case if you're out on like a fitness ride and you went a little hard and you want just a little bit of throttle to get back home. Now like I said, this is a super lightweight, super streamlined bike. This is for someone who wants something that's just simple, not a lot to deal with, mechanical brakes, single speed, there's just not a lot going on here. It's also a really good price. Right now it's priced at I think $1,345. I've seen it on sale, often dropping into the $1,250 range, which is a pretty good price for a 25 mile an hour e-bike, especially one that's this light and this agile. It's technically considered the gravel edition here, so it's a type of gravel bike. Honestly, if you're doing some like real hard gravel biking, this probably isn't the right one for you. It's not meant to, you know, withstand some of the rigors of really serious gravel biking, the kind of stuff that people use three, four, or five thousand dollar gravel e-bikes on. But it is great for both city riding and some nice light off-road trails, and that's basically what I use it for. When I want a super light, super easy bike for riding around either the city or the trails, this is the one I grab. For those that don't like those one size fits all e-bikes, this one actually comes in two sizes, so you're more likely to find one that's gonna fit you. The only downside here that I would love to see upgraded is that it is a cadence sensor for the pedal assist. Torque sensor would have been beautiful, would have made this just so much better, but it's hard to complain at this price for all that you're getting here. There are nicer Ride One Up e-bikes out there, but at this price, I love this bike for just such a simple, lightweight, and fun ride. All right, the next bike on the list is... Ah, the Aventon Solterra, got it right here. All right, let's talk the Aventon Solterra. I always go back and forth between Aventon and Aventon, but either way you say it, this bike is awesome. Now, it is one of the lower power on this list. It is a 36 volt system, so it's not gonna be super powerful. It's a 350 watt motor, but what it lacks in power, it makes up in power delivery. The reason is that it has a torque sensor. A torque sensor is a sensor down by the pedals, and what it does is it translates your pedaling power into motor power. Unlike cheaper methods that are usually a cadence sensor that basically just detects if you're pedaling, and if you are pedaling, it gives you all that power, a torque sensor not only detects if you're pedaling, it detects how hard you're pedaling. So the harder you pedal, the more it eases on that power. And it's just a lot more intuitive, a lot more natural feeling, and it makes the bike a lot more fun to ride, in my opinion. It just works better. It's not a surge of power. It's a very comfortable amount of power. 
The other advantage is that it brings that power on instantly. You don't have to wait like a cadence sensor. If you've ridden an e-bike and you notice you got to pedal for about a second or two before the power kicks in, that's because it's waiting to see if you're pedaling. With a torque sensor, it knows the instant you apply force to the pedal and it already starts giving you power. So it's just a lot nicer, more comfortable, more intuitive way to use pedal assist. But of course, this bike still has a throttle as well. It'll get you up to 20 miles per hour either on throttle or pedal assist. So it's great for people that want to max out that class two level, getting all the way up to 20 miles an hour. The battery is modest. It's 36 volts and 10 amp hours for 360 watt hours. So it's not the biggest battery out there, but we are talking about bikes that are more affordable. In this case, this one has an MSRP of $1,399. Sometimes Aventon has sales on these, so you gotta check. Again, that link is gonna be down below. So if you wanna check the current price, it might be on sale. But for a torque sensor e-bike, it is hard to find them below this price. This is an awesome e-bike with a lot of nice features. It's got that color display, the torque sensor. It comes in multiple sizes. I like the colors. I love this blue color. I think it's real pretty. And the frame is also really nicely welded. There is no other bike on this list that can touch a Venton when it comes to this frame welding. It is so nice. Plus, I really like their eco packaging because I just think it's a great idea and it speaks to what the whole e-bike movement is about, you know, sustainability and paying an eco-conscious mind forward. At $1,399, it is a little bit more expensive than several of the other bikes on this list, but because it's got that torque sensor and it just rides so beautifully, so nicely, and feels like such a lightweight, nimble, easy to ride bike, it definitely makes the list for me. All right, coming up next is the Electric XP. Now I've long described the Electric XP as the best bang for your buck electric bike in the entire US market. And I still feel that way. If all you have is $999, but you want an awesome performing folding fat tire e-bike, this is the one to go for. This is the Electric XP 3.0. It was recently updated with hydraulic disc brakes, which you can see it has here. And so for $1,000 getting hydraulic brakes, you almost never see that. So that's already a great start. But the performance here, that's really the take home. We've got a 500 watt motor back here that's really rated for 1,000 watts of peak power. The battery is a little bit more modest. It's about uh, 480 watt hours, 48 volts, 10 amp hours. Though there is an upgrade available if you want the long range battery that bumps it up to 14 amp hours, gets you about 40% more range. Even so, this base model with the 10 amp hour battery is probably going to be enough for most people, unless you're just always riding really fast or always going on throttle and you wanna have a little bit more breathing room with your range. Now, speaking of throttle, this is a class two e-bike. It comes out of the box with the throttle and a 20 mile an hour speed limit, but you can unlock it to do class three operation up to 28 miles an hour with pedal assist. In practice, I find that I'm usually getting closer to 26 to 27 miles an hour, sometimes 28 miles an hour with a fully charged battery, but still 26 to 27 is pretty darn good. Some other things I really like about this bike though are the features. In addition to that suspension we have up front, there is just a really nice rear rack back here. I love the passenger package you can get for this because you can add it back here and you can carry an adult on back. The weight limit on this rear rack is I think 150 pounds. So you know you can carry your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever back there as long as they're under 150. I tested this sucker out with Levi Conlo, the CEO of Electric Bikes once, and the two of us were just ripping around on this thing no problem at all. There's even a little handlebar accessory that goes back here so that your rear passenger has something to hold on to and they feel a little more secure. So all around, just a really cool option to be able to carry someone on back here and turn this into a two-person bike. As I said, for under a thousand bucks, it is just hard to find another e-bike out there with this kind of value. It's not the best quality bike. I mean, it's fine, you know, it'll last great for most people, but for a thousand bucks, you can't expect to get something like you're gonna get in a bike shop, like a three or $4,000 bike. If you were shopping on a budget though, this is really a great option. Okay, time to do another bike and it is the, oh, time to find ourselves a Rad Runner. This is the Rad Runner 2. This is something of the original utility e-bike. This sort of started the utility e-bike craze, and it is an awesome model. Now this one is a new addition. It's the Pool Shark Blue. 
it's actually $50 more than the regular version. So if you're really on a budget, probably go for the regular version. You can get it in either black or green, but this cool uh, blue color, you gotta pay up for that one. Now, the bike has an MSRP of $1,499. It's often on sale for below that, so make sure you check to see if it's on sale right now. But there are a lot of cool features about this bike. First of all, great performance. It's got a 20 mile an hour top speed, 750 watt rear hub motor. The battery is a 48 volt, 14 and a half amp hour pack for 672 watt hours. So you're gonna get great range out of this big battery. Next though, the take home message here is just how much utility there is. There's this big built in rack back here and it is great for adding the passenger package. I highly recommend grabbing that if you can spring for it and if you've got another person in your life that you often travel around with it's a great way to bring your girlfriend boyfriend husband wife whoever kids on the back it's just a really cool feature to add a seat back here and those foot pegs to be able to carry people with you next i really like the tires here these are not full four inch tires it's a 3.3 my favorite tire width is about three inches so it's just slightly wider than that but this is a nice compromise between being too fat so you don't have that nimbleness and still having enough tire enough rubber and air beneath you to have a really good nice cushy ride now back here it is a single speed in the back so you got to keep that in mind you're not going to have all those gears to run through the other small disadvantage is it comes with a simplified display so you just get your pedal assist level your battery level and you've got those four pedal assist levels to choose from but other than those sort of shortcomings the bike itself is just an incredibly awesome e-bike for real utility work this is the bike you get if you want basically a cargo bike but in a shorter package because that's the way it functions you know you can add that big rack or basket up front you can add big baskets in the rear and it is basically a short tail cargo bike for anyone who has issues with their legs mobility the fact that it is a step through makes it super easy to mount and one last thing about this bike that i love it comes with that double kickstand so it is super stable when it's parked you don't have to worry about parking on an incline because it's got the double kickstand at its msrp of 1499 dollars a bit pricey you know it's on the upper end for this list but it is often on sale and even at 1500 dollars i still love this bike partly because of how amazing it is and partly because it really set the trend for this new wave of utility e-bikes. Okay, and last but not least, I know which bike this is. It is the Velotrick T1. This is the Velotrick T1, formerly the Velotrick Thunder One. This is an awesome sort of low power, but very comfortable e-bike. It's really more for street use. Uh, commuters would find this useful, maybe as a daily transportation bike. Not so much utility, you know, for that I'd stick with some of the others like the Electric XP, like the Rad Runner, that kind of stuff but a really great bike. If you live in an apartment, you're gonna love that this thing is only 36 pounds. It is super lightweight, but it's still got pretty good performance. It gets up to 20 miles per hour. It has a 360 watt hour battery, and it's got a torque sensor like we talked about with the Aventon Solterra. So it's fairly similar in specs to that bike. However, if you do wanna go faster, you can actually unlock it up to 25 miles per hour. Now there is no throttle on this model, that's unlike the Solterra, so this is going to be a pedal assist only bike. But because it's got that torque sensor, it's at least a very nice, comfortable, and intuitive feeling pedal assist. It's got some really nice components on it too, like that front axle is a through axle that makes it much more robust, much stronger, and more rugged. It's also got hydraulic disc brakes, something that you rarely see in this level of e-bikes. You know, we saw them on the Electric XP, but generally under about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars, you almost never see hydraulic brakes, and even up to about fifteen hundred, it's pretty rare. So a really cool feature to see that they included hydraulic disc brakes here. I really love this orange color. I think they call it lava. There are other colors available, but this one is my favorite. And the frame does come in two sizes, which is nice, so they don't try to do one of those one size fits all things. Another cool feature here is that the bike comes with Apple's Find My integration. That means if you have an iPhone, it already has basically the guts of an AirTag built into it. So you just add it into your phone as a device, and wherever it is, you'll be able to locate it, at least if it's in a fairly populated area that people are moving around with iPhones and iPads and other eye devices. Unlike GPS, you can't find it just anywhere. So like, you know, if it gets stolen and put in a little shack in the middle of nowhere where no one's around, there are no iPhones in the area, you're probably not gonna be able to locate it there. But if you live in a city or any built up area, you're gonna be pinging off of phones like every minute. Now the bike is priced with an MSRP of $1,499, but it's actually on sale right now at the time of filming for $999, which is a pretty awesome price. 
I don't know if that sale is going to last. Of course, you can click that link in the description below to find out. But whatever the current sale price is, I can tell you that the bike itself is awesome. I love riding this one and I use it as my own personal bike when I'm looking for a pedal assist only bike for the city. So there you have it, everyone. Those are my top five low cost electric bikes. These are bikes that are still good quality. You know, I ride them myself. I really like these bikes but they don't cost an arm and a leg. As you saw, they're all under about $1,400, and so they're on the lower end of the price range. Sure, there are plenty of cheaper e-bikes out there. You can get e-bikes for 500 bucks on Amazon, but those kinds of bikes, I generally don't recommend them just because they are so low quality. They're often considered disposable e-bikes because they're just not gonna last that long. If you get half a year to a year out of some of those e-bikes, that's actually pretty good. A lot of them, their batteries will die before then, or different components will start breaking, the shifters, the brakes, anything on it can start to go. So generally, I don't recommend going for those super cheap Walmart, Amazon, those types of bikes, just because it doesn't pay in the end. Okay, now, like I promised at the beginning of the video, it is time for the e-bikes for good segment. This is a program I started for anyone who can't afford an electric bike, but knows that it would really improve their life. Some of the past winners have been people that needed an e-bike to get to work, but they couldn't afford a car or other means. People who have had amputations, they wanna get back on a bike to get back into shape, and all sorts of other situations where an e-bike is out of your reach, but it would really help you. I wanna say a big thanks to Aventon for sponsoring the giveaway this time and putting up a Solterra 2 for one lucky winner. So how's this gonna work? Basically, you just go to ebikeschool.com slash ebikesforgood. The address is down here below at the bottom of the screen. There's an entry form there. Let me know your story. Let me know your situation. Why could you use an e-bike? How could it help improve your life, but it's just outside of your reach? From those entries, there will be one randomly selected winner that will be announced at the end of the next video. I think that the Aventon Solterra is going to be a huge help to somebody out there. We already went over why it's such an awesome e-bike, but I think because it is such a light weight yet potent e-bike it's going to be really useful especially for someone who needs a way to get around you know they need to get to work they need to get to the grocery store those kinds of things where you need a bike for utility and transportation this is going to be an awesome one i'm very excited to get it out to someone so make sure you go to ebikeschool.com slash ebikes for good and enter into the giveaway now it is time to announce the winner of the bike given away at the end of my last video and the randomly selected winner is Carlos G, who unfortunately had to sell his car to begin paying off medical bills for him and his wife, and an e-bike will allow him to get around again. Carlos, we're gonna make it happen for you. And if I can borrow 10 more seconds of everyone's time, I generally steer clear of anything political on my channel, but please let this serve as a reminder to us all that there is no reason that the richest country in the world should see its citizens selling their basic needs in order to pay for life-saving health care. Every other modern Western country in the entire world has figured out how to make affordable health care a basic human right. The U.S. can do it too if the people desire it. <sighs> okay, happy face back on. So congratulations, I actually just called and updated them to let them know that they had won the giveaway. They're super excited, so make sure that if you want to win an e-bike, this time the event in Solterra, that you enter that giveaway yourself. And now for the last, last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter who will win a free copy of one of my books is... Byron Cronkrite. And this really was random, it had nothing to do with flattery. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you gotta do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't wanna wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.